Hello, I'm Connor from Blaze Kick, and I'm here with two other people, Arms. Hello. And Tyler. Hey. And we're going to give a really quick recap of the Nintendo World Championship 2015, as well as a couple things that happened before it. So, it opened up with a Treehouse uh, live thing, and they started with a premiere of a new level from Yoshi's Woolly World. That yeah. hype for you guys? Yes, it is. The level looked awesome. I actually, I actually joined towards the end of that one. But, uh, I mean, I'm gonna get the game either way. It's, it's like, like, add fuel to the fire of my burning wallet. <laughs> yeah, the, the level is really awesome. Um, I do hope I can find someone um, to play with uh, co-op. Co with. I, I, that, that's I, on I par with my skill level. Because, you know, if you have someone that's, that's not on par with your skill level, it's kind of weird. I, I love the idea that they use where it's like, oh yeah, um, every nothing's nothing's tangible until a little shroud goes over it. I think that's I think that's a neat idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Surprise. then uh, after that, they sort of said, so we have an announcement from a dev. So I thought personally it was just going to be like Mario Maker. or... Something we like already knew of that was hype, but not super hype. But no, it was a brand new announcement. Etoy himself uh, gave an announcement that Earthbound Beginnings, or Mother One, is, as of recording this, now available on the eShop. Yeah. Yeah, it's We're hyped. it's the it's the first it's the first technical mother game, and uh, it it got its translation done like it was all the way done through its localization and it never released in North America for some reason like then the prototype went out got public people started downloading it as ROMs and it's just kind of been known as Earthbound Zero in North America but now we actually have a proper name and it has a full release and you can buy it now for seven dollars on the Wii U eShop mm -hmm. are you guys gonna get it uh, not right away, but I probably will eventually. Well, yeah, that's that's gonna be the same thing for me. I, I don't feel worried that they're gonna be like, oh yeah, we're just gonna, you know, uh, get rid of this after like two or three months, because that's what my first impression was for Earthbound, was that it's gonna be a limited release. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna get Earthbound, Earthbound Beginnings at some point. Yep. Yeah. yeah, me too. Pro yeah, I, I might download it today, but I don't know, I might be busy throughout this whole week, so, yeah. Kind of spent a bunch of money on Smash stuff, so... Yeah. You spent $30 on the DLC pack. <laughs> 30. Yeah, I don't really know if I have the money right now for it. I don't know if it's worth $30 yet. Uh, no, I was talking about Mother. I don't know if I have the money for that. I only bought Ryu and Dreamland 64. Mm. But, I, bought, I bought the characters. I'm not gonna buy the, the me costumes. Yeah, I'm not buying those. Yeah, I'm not. I don't need those. But you don't want to be long. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'll just make a me long. Pretend it's the same thing. Fair enough. So after that, it transitioned into the uh, World Championships, which went. Th it, it was kind of an interesting setup. It was double elimination, but they had a thing where. He, if you lost, you went to the underground, and then there was this sort of fight, and only one person would make it out of the, or not make it out, but only one person wouldn't get eliminated from the underground each round. Mm -hmm. And it was modern games for the normal thing, and then retro speedrunny game play for the uh, underground. Underground. So, did you guys like that setup? I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was like an escalation kind of thing, where it started off stuff where it's like, oh yeah, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah. And then it kind of just went uh, above and beyond. Yep. And we we got a couple of games that we just didn't expect to have such hype to it. Mm -hmm. Like, I kind of I kind of figured Zelda One would be a bit simple, like you know, it's kind of a baseline speed run. But Super Metroid kind of caught me off guard. And, uh... Moonfight. 
Oh yeah, yeah the the blue moon. The was awesome. I love that. Yeah, Bloom Bloom Trip was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I like that setup as well. You basically gave the contestants like game saving mile where you know we're coming up, like Mario Kart and Smash Bros. And then just Yeah, those were yeah, those you know, were like, the only two we expected. Yeah, well, well I, most I predicted Mario... Mario Maker. I predicted Mario Maker. So, and... Yeah, most people thought Mario Maker was going to appear. Yeah. And I was I was called out on the podcast about it, so... Mm. <laughs> predicted that. Um, but yeah, I, I like the setup. Um, and yeah, so super hyped. One for thing I didn't really like was the first two games were both team-based. Of... Platoon, and then a brand new annou- first announced today game, Blast Ball. Well, well, first things first. Uh, a lot of a lot of games, a lot of tournaments in this sort of do it. Like a lot of reality shows, I'm pretty sure do this, where it's yeah. like you you have to depend on your your adversaries to advance. Yeah. And if you want to continue, you have to basically make your worst enemies continue as well. So I, I I I didn't mind it. Like I was kind of curious about the whole Splatoon thing working out. Like I saw that they had a dev build that had like a best of three competitive thing, and I got a little <laughs> curious about that. But the game the game that they showed off after um, Blast Ball, uh, <laughs> I I actually went on Twitter about this. Because there's a game that was in beta about a month or so ago uh, on the PlayStation 4 called Rocket League. And it is essentially the same thing as you saw from Blast Ball, but the ball is like 10 times larger. And instead of robots, everybody's in cars. <gasps> oh, I think I've seen that. Yeah, I, I posted a few videos about it on my on my YouTube channel. I didn't get a chance to do much content for it, but uh, it's like I, I think I... I think Blast Ball is just lacking the kind of insane personality that Rocket League has, and I feel like it won't excel if it's exactly as what we saw. Yeah, it kind of looks like they're uh, going with, like, Splatoon was successful at mixing up shooting, so let's try some other mixing up the shooting genre type thing. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of weird. Soccer. Yeah. Um, here's the uh, thing, you can't, you can't make soccer... You can't make soccer terrible unless you completely flip the concept upside down and don't make it work. Well, it's like, oh yeah, a, a combat, a combat shooter soccer game. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that sounds. It, it that sucks. Game, yeah, that game sounds like, or looks like really frustrating to play. Every everyone trying to shoot a ball to try to move it. Mm. Eh, I don't really want right. to do that. And just going back to the actual tournament real quick i also didn't like how they didn't have any names at all for the players mm-hmm. they, and, they had it they had it during yeah they had screen. them during uh mario, mario kart, kart yeah, that's on the cards, smash i think might have had them and uh mario maker smash. was only one at a time but smash didn't smash didn't have it um oh it didn't yeah super uh mario kart 8 had it because it was the part of the split screen thing what was the game after? No, they did it with Balloon Fight as well. Yeah, um, one, yeah and was, it was Super Metroid. Uh, that was, that yeah, was they cool. did it with Super Metroid. Yeah. And, uh, they, oh yeah, they did it with basically everything in the underground. But yeah, exactly. they didn't They didn't do it with like half the games in the top level. Like Splatoon, there was that one point where that guy got like four kills in a row. <laughs> and, and I, I would have like liked to know three. who that was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not often you get to see a guy go full ham going for a <laughs> pentakill in Splatoon. <laughs> yeah, that would have been cool to know who it was. Yeah, well, yeah I mean, or, the or even the moment. show up on Twitter at some point and just be like, hey, look at this sick quad kill I got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of glad they didn't go with any of the other game types, though, because Turf War is probably the best yeah, thing for competitive. With, like, uh, I, I don't think Splat Zones would have yeah. worked very well. And uh, Tower Control, I don't even know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And the rest of the tournament was pretty fun to watch, but nothing major. I mean, there was the whole jokes on Twitter, kill the animals, save the animals thing. That, that's just a trend for yeah. running. That's, it's really great because the guy who who won the 
who won the Super Metroid branch. He's a speedrunner, but he doesn't speedrun Super Metroid. He speedruns Punch Out. <laughs> <laughs> and he, I think he's. I don't even know what else he speedran. But Sinister One is a very popular speedrunner. Um, next to Rom Scout and such. Uh, not quite to that caliber, but he's still like a really cool guy. Mm. Um, either way, it's like. I, I don't know, I thought it was pretty good. Like, it felt like it was escalating in interest from, like, beginning to the end. Yeah. Like, yeah. It didn't It didn't seem very interesting at the start, because it was like, oh yeah, they're just they're just showing off the new stuff. They're Like, they're showing off the popular stuff, and then they'll get to the, the actual competitive stuff. But, no, they actually balanced it pretty well. They were like, okay, let's try to incorporate our popular games with our really classic games that we know people speedrun on a frequent basis, except balloon fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really like the next HDQ, I guess. Balloon trip. <laughs> I really like the inclusion of Mario Maker. It the inclusion of Mario Maker was probably the best publicity stuff. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, Watching I've that seen... made me excited for the game, and I was yeah, I was seen in Twitter. The moment like, I saw, the moment I saw the people still tweeting about Mario the, Maker. Yeah. The moment I saw Super the, Mario Maker. Hot, Oh, the moment right, I saw right. the stack of um, the <laughs> moment I saw the stack of like the bomb with two hammer bros and a blooper at the top, I was like, I'm gonna pre-order this shit right now. <laughs> like, there is that like that moment alone was just beautiful. And of course, watching watching the watching the underdog John was like the greatest thing because you just see him excel yeah. in the things that Cosmo who originally ran Super Mario 64 couldn't do like it was it was a wonder to watch cuz you, you think that it would take him about as long as Cosmo would and then he would just do it and it was just amazing to watch and to see all the creativity of what you can do with Mario Maker there was there was stuff that I I know wouldn't be possible without essentially hacking the ROM to complete mm -hmm. to like lack of recognition just tearing it apart and recoding it from the ground up you wouldn't be able to do anything that Mario Maker can do like it was gorgeous to watch and the game looks really nice graphic yeah. wise yeah yeah the one thing i the one thing i'm not quite sold on is the idea that having the music be in reverb mm. cuz like i have I have a headset that really does reverb and everything. Like it does a lot of echo. It like keeps a lot of stuff on the subwoofer, and everything is like it. I just hear a lot of the reverb, and it's super strange when you just hear the silence for a minute, and it just echoes for a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird, yeah. but uh, I think I think the. What was the moment where you realized that you wanted this game desperately? Like, you needed um, this game in your life. When he went through the door in the fourth level, and there was just that stack of three Bowsers. Yeah, yeah. The, that three, was the, the three, three, the third level, yeah. That oh, was, yeah, that was third. That was, that was hilarious. My my moment was, um... Uh... <laughs> my moment was the... Moment, uh... Mario went up the vine and there was a Goomba in a stiletto heel. I was like, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then and then the and then the, the whole trick room thing was pretty great because I remember I think I think it was John. He he goes into a room. Or no, it was Cosmo, wasn't it? It it was caught he he Cosmo goes into a room. First, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it was like, nope. It was Cosmo. He goes into a room where it's just a wall surrounded by spinies. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's just going around in a circle and he's like, Nope. <laughs> Leaves. Yep. Like it, it's really great because you can't hear their vocal reaction, but you can <laughs> tell the moment where they're like, Oh fuck this and leave. Like that moment where they can process it, it's it's excellent. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. real quick since we're running out of time here. We have about eight minutes left. Uh, how hype was that intro for the Hungry Box Reggie battle? And uh, then it just 
the immediate letdown once the match actually started. <laughs> it wasn't a letdown. It was actually fun to watch. Well, it was yeah, fun it to was, watch, it was, but you're expecting like, I, a I love, I love how, match. I love how everybody starts laughing at, at Bizume. And then the moment he gets a KO, everybody just roars in in cheers. It's like the greatest thing. <laughs> yeah, that, that intro. Oh, and and the graphic behind uh, that they had on the screen. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> I, I'd I'd say that people are gonna are gonna use that are gonna use that that remix sequence where it's just Fizume repeating kick, kick your, your ass. ass. I feel like people are going to take a clip from that and turn it into a remix. <laughs> like, that that's going to be the new This is Sparta remix. Yeah. They, they are really embracing the thing. Yeah. So, is that about it? Yeah, I think uh, that's it. Oh, well, I mean, besides the fact that Miyamoto came out and congratulated... Yeah. Congratulated them, gave them autographed new 3DSs, and uh, gave this really nice amiibo trophy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's an amiibo. I really hope it's yeah. an amiibo. He just he just puts a five pound thing on top of the <laughs> pad. Oh, it's broken, but it registered. I got Ness. <laughs> what if it's just the gold Mario amiibo? <laughs> yeah. You can play Mario. Hey guys, hold on, it. I brought my amiibo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then you put it on the gamepad, and the gamepad breaks. Yeah, it's like cannot. Your your gamepad is just like, oh, screw this! I I didn't get hired for this shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I have a question for you guys. Would you like to see this um, become an annual thing? I would love to see this become an annual thing, but they need to. But they they need to. They need to step it up every year. Like they need to open it up to more locations outside of the U.S. They need to. They need to just get more locations. Yeah. Because well, having only eight locations really restricts it, and it and it feels like, as much as I enjoy the fact that it is great that uh, they got eight people to do it and eight celebrities, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like this would have been more substantial if this was like an annual event where it's like you get to watch a stream of the qualifiers, than the. Then like the first round elimination and the final sixteen meet at E three. Like you round it up to like forty eight and then go down to thirty two and sixteen. Yeah, I feel like that would be a better idea. Mm -hmm. Open it, open it up to Japan players, Europe, and all that. I feel like yeah. it's also a problem with uh, like no one was really cheering for the best by qualifiers. Everyone was cheering for, for the like, Ego Raptor, yeah, yeah. And, uh, the Smosh Dreamer. Games guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I was true. cheering for Bananas because of her name. <laughs> bananas is actually a really good speedrunner. Yeah, right. I'm gonna go check her out after this. Well, after Bethesda. Mm -hmm. Um, another quick question: Do you guys think this was a better event than last year's um tournament, Smash Bros. tournament? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd say yes because it opened it up to people like just normal people the smash was an invitational tournament mm -hmm. right and while this did have invitations there were still just your average joe and also i like the host a lot better than jeff keely i'm not someone who hates jeff keely but I the just... guy the guy that they got i can't remember his name yeah kevin He's, Pereira. he yeah kevin Pereira. Yeah. he it's really weird how many former G4 employees are on there because I know that for a fact that Kevin Pereira yeah, he used, used to host to... Attack of the Show. Yeah, exactly. That's where I know him from. And I'm and I'm watching because the Bethesda conference is live right now. It's not starting, but it's just discussion. And I see Amanda and uh, Adam Sessler. Okay. They're discussing it right now. So it looks like it looks like E3 is primarily open to the G4 crew. Like, are they? I have no idea. Either way. It's uh, it's really nice that they got a, a host that actually, because I remember during the Mario Kart 8 thing, where they were all racing, or mm -hmm. maybe it was Smash, something along those lines. Either way, I remember seeing in the bottom left corner it had a camera of the people on the couch, and Kevin Pereira just stood up and started like intently watching the screen, like yeah. he was so into it. Yeah, he was really into Mario Maker. Oh yeah, yeah. Everybody was into Mario Maker. Did you hear that? Did you hear that crowd? Yeah. Even 
everyone give me, everyone give Proton me John is Proton John is <laughs> fortified now because he knows he knows what's coming. He knows what's possible and he imagines a fate worse than Kaizo too. So we're probably gonna be wrapping it up here. Mm -hmm. So this was part of Blaze Kicks E3 coverage. Uh, stay tuned later tonight or tomorrow morning for our Bethesda recap. Uh, I'm not sure exactly who's part of that. Uh, Will and Brooklyn. Okay. And um, then Monday we'll be covering all four conferences that day. And Tuesday, Nintendo and Square Enix. And then whenever that PC gaming show is might be covered depending on what's there. Mm. So, see you guys later. Bye. Bye.